All right. In this video, we're going to try to do a little bit of factoring of polynomials. I've got a couple of cubics here that we're going to work on. The second one will be a little more involved than the first one. Um, if you haven't watched the uh, area models for multiplying polynomials or for dividing polynomials, you should probably look at those first because that's uh, an important part of what we're going to be doing here. So the first thing that we need to do when we're looking at um, our first example here is we look at the uh, 28 that's at the beginning. The rational root theorem tells me that if this has rational roots, that those rational roots could possibly be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 7, plus or minus uh, 14, plus or minus 28. Those are all my possible rational roots. That's a lot there to uh, choose from. So I am going to ask for a little bit of help from graph here. So when I take a look at the graph for this and compare it to my list, it looks like maybe uh, minus one might be something worth trying there. Uh, positive 4 has a place where it gets. So let's try the minus 1 and see if we can get that out of there. Of course, if it crosses at minus 1, then that means we should be able to factor out an x plus 1. So we'll check to see um, if we can do that by making x plus 1 the thing that we divide by. And now we're going to follow our division process here. This has to make an x cubed. Um, and if that's going to be an x cubed, then this would have to be an x squared. And that would make this an x squared. These two on this diagonal are supposed to add up to negative 10x squared. And if that's a 1x squared right there, and they're supposed to add to negative 10, then this must be a minus 11x squared right there. And if that's a minus 11x squared, then this would have to be a minus 11x right there. And that would make this, since it's multiplying by 1, also a minus 11x. These diagonals, the linear parts up here, are supposed to add up to... 17x. Okay, so um, that must mean that I have a negative 28x right there. Nope, that's not right. A positive 28. 28 minus 11 gives me a 17. Okay, so if that's a minus 28x, then that means this would have to be a plus 28. And when I drop that down, I get a positive 28, and this matches with that, so I have no remainder, which means that I was able to factor out an x plus 1, and in the first part of my factoring then, <coughs> excuse me, I can write this as an x plus 1 times this piece, so that's my x squared minus 11x, plus 28. Um, I'm going to move these out of the way. We'll uh, get to them later. In fact, let me... All right, so continuing on uh, from where we were, then we need to try to factor this part. We can continue to use our graph that was over here. We already verified that that was one We'll try for this one over here that looks to be uh, the 4 from our list. If that's at a positive 4, then that means I'm going to be trying to take an x minus 4 out. And I don't need to go back up to my original problem. I'm just going to use this one down here. Let me get down a little bit where I can work with this easier. And we know this first part is supposed to be an x squared, so that would mean that that has to be an x. And if that's an x, then this is a minus 4x. But these two on this diagonal are supposed to add up to negative 11x. 
10, so there must have been another 7, um, negative 7. That would have to be a negative 7x in there, which would make this a negative 7, which would give me a positive 28, and this is supposed to add up to 28, so no remainder matches what's there, and I can pull the x minus 4 out, and I also end up with an x minus 7. So my complete factored form, let me get some of this stuff out of the way here. My complete factored form then, I pulled out an x plus 1. And I pulled out an x minus 4. And was left with an x minus 7. So verify that this piece over here was crossing at 7. And that's my complete factored form for that first one. All right, so uh, trying this one now, looking at it, comparing to my rational root theorem, would tell me that my possible numerators, that says numerators, my possible numerators are a plus or minus 1, a plus or minus 3, plus or minus 7, plus or minus 21. I'd be a little surprised if I ended up with that. Um, and my possible denominators, that says denominators, are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3. These are coming from the positive 12, right? The possible factors of that. Plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12 as a possibility there. So that gives me a lot of different possible things that it might be. I am, again, going to generate a graph to take a look at um, which of those are reasonable ones to look at. Okay. Um, they all seem fairly tight in here. I think I want a little more detail on my graph there. so. I am going to uh, make sure that my steps in the x direction and knock those down so I can see every unit along the way. That looks to me right there to be about a negative one half. And so I can try taking an x plus one half. That would indicate that the x plus one half was equal to zero, or if I got rid of the fraction, that the two x plus one is equal to zero. So I'm going to try to divide this thing by two x plus one. I'm move some of these things out of the way, and if I'm going to divide by two x plus one. And I know that my first square here has to give me a 12x cubed. And um, if I've got the 12x cubed there, then that must mean this was a 6x squared. So that also makes this a 6x squared. But the numbers on this diagonal have to add up to a negative 40x squared which means I must have had a minus 46 x squared. That's going to be minus 46 x squared. Then this would have had to been a minus 23 x. And that would make this a minus 23 x. But these things on this diagonal are supposed to add up to 19 x. So 23 and another 19 sounds like uh, 42. Oops, sorry, that's right here. 42x. Let me actually write what I say. So I need a 42x right there. And if that's going to be a 42x, then this would have to be a 21. And so that would make this a 21. And the things on the diagonal were supposed to add up to 21, and they do. So this factors out. And so far, I have a 2x plus 1. 
times a 6x squared minus 23x plus 21. And I can go looking for another one um, that looks right here. This one looks like 3 halves, okay, which would be an x minus 3 halves is equal to 0 or 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. So let's try to take a 2x minus 3 out of that. So make a 2x and a minus 3. This is supposed to end up as a 6x squared, so that must have been a 3x. And that is a minus 9x down here a little bit more space. These two on the diagonal are supposed to add up to a negative 23x. So that must have been a uh, 9 more than negative 23 is negative 14. Negative 14 and negative 9 makes a negative 23. If that's a negative 14, then this must be a minus 7. And that would make this a positive 21. And this diagonal is supposed to add up to 21. Okay. And it does exactly with no remainder. So now my final factored form, I have the 2x plus 1 that I pulled out in the beginning. Then I pulled out a 2x minus 3. And I have up here a 3x minus 7 remaining. So that is my complete factored form. Take that up there and write that. I'm going to translate this up and put it in the spot where I wanted to have my factored form. So that is equal to that when we get it all factored out.